like, yeah, I'll play a game with you. Sit down. Oh, we got a game to play. Sorry. It's cool. It's like a dungeon in here. It's kind of scary. It's good. It's all right. Sure. Why is that bat looking at me? Don't worry about it. It's fine. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. You know, is it just me or does it seem like it's taken us over a month to start playing this game? All right, here we go. The Legend of Zelda board game. Okay, so let's start by taking a look at the game itself. The box art is a little quirky, but I have to admit, I really like it. It's so different than most of the art you're used to seeing for any of the Zelda video games. Princess Zelda and Link do look a little on the chubby side, but I think that's because the artist was really going for an elf look. Aside from that, I think it's a pretty epic looking box. It's got excitement jumping right out at you that really makes you want to open the box and start playing the game. So, with that being said, let's see what's inside the box. See if it's as exciting as the outside. So here's the game board. Not bad, right? This is about the best you can expect, I think, when interpreting the classic top-down gameplay of Zelda into a board game. The board is set up into different worlds. You start in World 1 in the lower left of the board, and you work your way around clockwise to World 6 in the lower right. Classic Zelda elements have been incorporated into these worlds, giving us a forest world, a water world, desert world, and then three worlds that resemble dungeons. So now that we've seen the board, let's move on to the player pieces. Zelda. You want to be Zelda? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, we, we, there's only one piece. It's Link. We have to both be Link. But I want to be Zelda. But we both have to be Link. I want to be Zelda! But we both have to be Link. Aww. That sucks. Can I please be Zelda? No, dude, that's not the way the game works. Suck. Stupid Link. Yep, here's your one playable piece, Link. And unfortunately, he's just a small piece of cardboard. I've never liked that, really. I prefer plastic pieces on board games. But maybe that's just because it feels more like toys to me. Along with Link, we get a slew of cardboard heart pieces, as well as several villains including Gleox, Tektites, and... Mulbrins? What? Anyway, then there's the dice. Now, the dice are supposed to look like this. But for whatever reason, my game didn't come with the stickers. So I just drew my own designs. The dice are supposed to include two red sides and four sword sides. But instead of those boring red sides, I just decided to use the word pwned instead. <laughs> pwned. Pain! <laughs> pwned. Go! Pwned. Those sucks! Pwned! I hate you. Roll again. Are you gonna say pwned again? No. Pwned! Go! <laughs> Okay, so you've seen what the game looks like. Now, 
let's see how it plays. Both players use that same link piece. Yes, just like in the video game, there's only one link. No multiple colors here. You take turns rolling the numbered dice, and you move along the yellow spots within the world. When you land on a square, you have to flip over one of the tiles. If your tile reveals a monster, then both players team up to kill it by rolling their attack dice, which are evenly distributed among the players. The number on the monster tile represents how many swords you have to roll in order to kill him. So for example, if it says 2 on the tile, then between all of the players, two swords have to be rolled. If the monster piece has a heart on it, then killing him adds one heart to each player that rolled a sword. If you fail to roll the correct number of swords, then the monster wins the battle, and you lose a heart piece. Losing all of your heart piece knocks you out of the game. You have to continue to move around in each world and flip over tiles until you have found the special hidden item that will allow you to cross over into the next world. Such special items include a raft, a key, or a bomb, depending on which world you're in. You continue this procedure all the way until you get to the last world. The last world is full of Ganon tiles, and then one lone tile to represent the Triforce and Princess Zelda. The player that ends up turning over the tile with the Triforce and Zelda on it is declared the winner of the game. And that's it. Game over. I know, doesn't seem like much, does it? The rules are very basic, and to be honest, they're really not that bad. The only problem is that you fly through this game very quickly. A two-player game will probably only take you about 10 minutes to complete. So, I guess if nothing else, at least the board looks cool, and you can use it as a backdrop for your Zelda action figures. Three and... Ha! Ha! Princess Zelda! I found her! I found her! That totally means I won the game. I win, you lose. Ha 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 ha! You're not gonna slap me, oh. are you? No. No. Why would I slap you, Dan? I don't know. Why just... would I? Why would I? <laughs> when hitting is so much better. Well, Dan, been a good game. You have fun. Nice playing. <sighs> Call me when you wake up. If you wake up. I'm uh, I'm out at 500. And uh, that's what I think of life. Hey, look! Double Dragon!